Hello friends, it's Simone. I want to introduce to you these two pens. This one is the Mayfair Pens Naria model. This is a pocket pen that is an eyedropper pen. It screws to post to make a full-size fountain pen. The grip section is included in the pen body. It's a really weird shape, but rather attractive to me. I just got this this week and I have plans for this. That's the reason why I purchased it. This is the Mayfair Pens Vanyar model. This is a cartridge converter pen. It is a similar design to the Naria model. Um, and I purchased this this summer at the San Francisco Pen Show 2024. Now I would like to show you some size comparisons. I want to talk about my plans for this pen, why I purchased it, and um, give you some measurements because I'm curious myself. So let's let's so start. We have the Naria in the middle right here, then the Vanyar to the right, a Twisby Eco over here, a Lamy Safari to the left, and then a Sharpie uh, marker also included so that you can see if you don't have any of these pen models, most people know and are familiar with the size of a Sharpie. I included this here as well. Uh, of course, the Naria as a pocket pen is the shortest pen in this lineup. The Vanyar, in comparison though, is the longest. I also have an Estabrook ST just to show you what the sizes are here. Let me put that right next to the Vanyar. It's still, the Vanyar is still longer than the Estabrook ST capped. So now let's uncap those. I do not post either the Lamy Safari, nor the Twisby Eco. The Vanyar model is not postable. As you can see, this doesn't work. Then we have the Estabrook SD, which is a pen that I more often than not post, which makes it super long in comparison to the others. Now, actually, let me revise that. I think I'm using this Estabrook SD unposted. Then here is the Naria model. And the Sharpie. Let's align them by the grip sections. The Lamy Safari as well as the Twisby Eco both have smaller nips than these three. All three of those take Yovo number six size nips. This is how the Vanyar model sits in my hand. This is how the Naria model sits in my hand. This is how a Sharpie sits in my hand. Let me post that, let me cap this again. And then here you can see how the Lamy Safari looks in my hand. The Estabrook SD, I showed that to you earlier. As well as the Twisby Eco. Now, in terms of grip section width, even though these are um, slanted here, there is a word for it. I have forgotten. They are big. Um, they are the biggest grip sections of all the pens that we have here. They're almost as big as the body of the Estabrook SD.
Now let's measure them real quickly so that I can give you some, some numbers or that I can actually write down those numbers for my pen log. I'm gonna just cap this again. This pen is actually inked. And then we'll start with measuring these pens. Length of the Naria model capped is 11.1 .1 centimeters. Uncapped, unposted, it is 9.8. And posted, I have some ideas here. It is 13.3. The weight posted or capped, both of those are the same weight. Let's see is 17 grams and uncapped the weight is 13. Now let's measure the diameter of the grip section. So we just saw that this was zero and then we'll go and so this is 12.88 at the narrowest 12.83 at the narrowest millimeters all right so i am going to measure this because it feels to me in my I feel like this is a little bit wider let's get this to zero again okay and then go here yeah 12.87 I don't know if I would actually notice that is that just maybe it's the visual 12.87 millimeters Let's just quickly measure the same thing. So this capped is, I'm looking for a pen, it's right here, 24. Capped, 24 grams. Uncapped, it is 20. There is no posting, so we don't have to measure that. Then we have the length. It is 14.9 capped. And uncapped, it is 13.7. So what do I want to do with this pen? I want to put my zoom nib on here. I can eyedropper this pen and then I have a fun writing instrument. This purchase was basically inspired by Aziza and her Inky Messes Lives. I really want some pens and pen bodies that I can use for fun stuff. Of course, I didn't have to purchase a maker pen. Probably you could also use cheaper pen models like Jin Hao's, Majan, uh, Asveen, and put those nibs on there. But I've been intrigued by this pen maker and model, and I just wanted to support him. So I did. I haven't really said anything about this body blank, which I don't know who the maker is. I believe that this is um, the 
Abigail Blank by Turin Penko. And so let's, let's just do it. Let me quickly tell you what I like so far about the Vanyar model that I have had for almost two full months now. Um, the pen looks awesome. I really, really love the holographic look of the speckles in here. I have learned since then that I really like holographic glitter, glimmer stuff. Um, I like how big the grip section is. It feels comfortable to hold. However, when I'm actually using the pen, my hand, even though this... Um, indentation here to show and indicate the grip section is very pronounced my hand still or my fingers still creep down to here and then this pen becomes quite uncomfortable because this edge here is really sharp and um it it hurts ish i also don't know really how to hold the pen well this is how I would prefer to hold a pen. Let me show you. Like so. And then I write like this. But when I'm actually going into the motion of writing, this feels almost maybe too broad. So I'm always um, moving my fingers closer together and starting to hold it like this. And this is not how I would normally hold a pen. And that is why I feel like I'm creeping down. Now, why did I buy another one of them? I really don't know. Um, I was just intrigued by the eyedropper ring, the idea of using this for fun stuff, and maybe possibly because I want to use it for fun stuff, this will not affect me as much. I will test it out and will let you know uh, at a later date. Um, I purchased these two pens for two different reasons. And so maybe possibly this one will work this might not, I will need to spend a little bit more time with both of these pens. Now, I want to pull out my silicone grease, which is right here, so that I can put some right here on this threading. And then I want to ink this pen with an ink, which I put away again. I would like to use Birmingham Pen Co. Puce Lagoon. This is an ink that I want to use in uh, November of 2024 as my lineup. And so we can, let's see how we do this. I brought out my Inkapet Octopus. I also purchased that at the San Francisco Pen Show. And I found that I can actually put this barrel down into this. Then I'm going to put my <laughs> ink sample right here. I have the nib, I have the, the cap, I have my grease that I'm going to open up right now. And then I have a pipette. And what I'm going to do is, and I actually think I'm just going to, let's see. Let's see what I'm going to do. This is one almost 1.75 millimeter, milliliters. Let's see how much goes in here. This almost fills the pen all the way, so I think that's enough. I'm going to set this back down here. I'm going to put a little bit of grease on my finger and then go just around the edge right here. Okay, I'm going to put this lid back on here. And then we'll see what happens. So I I got a broad nib with this. I might, as you can see, there is some silicone grease on this as well. That's why I got the idea to actually grease this nib. Um, I might get this ground to an architect nib. Not sure. I I have have a lot of time to think about all of this. if I put this nip down 
maybe I can put this here. I'll be back once this is ready to write. I think it is working now. So, new pen day. This is the Mayfair pens. Naria in Abigail. I don't know if this is how you write it. Um, I originally purchased it with a broad nib. I put on a zoom nib by The Good Blue. The ink that is inside here is Birmingham Pen Co. Puce. Lagoon and it does dry very similarly on Tomoyo River paper. It's interesting. It is greenish when it goes down wet and it works really well with the pen and then it dries to this pinkish gray that also works with the pen. That is something that I didn't anticipate and intend to do. Here is how the nib writes. The zoom nib writes more broadly when it's uh, at a lower writing angle and more uh, fine when it is at a higher writing angle. And I did put a light ink into this pen because I want to use this for inky messes. I really want to try. I will link one of her live videos in the description box down below so that you can check it out. I was super inspired. I want to do this too. Um, I hope I'm not just going to stay in the wanting stage now that I actually have purchased a pen to do this. Um, my first impressions so far. So I was disappointed when I realized the body wasn't holo glitter, just silver glitter. But that's my own fault. The pictures in the shop are very clear. The pen writes well. The length is good, but the sharp edge that stands out when the pen is capped is a little disappointing. My Vanier model that I purchased at the San Francisco Pen Show is much smoother and there is no step from the body to the cap. We'll see if that is something that annoys me so much that I need to let this pen go. Um, I'm hoping the grip issues I have with the Vanyar will not be an issue when using this pen as a play pen. What I also noticed while I was filming this video was that the capping as well as the posting is kind of harder to do because uh, you have to get the threads perfectly situated. Otherwise you will, I don't even know how that, what that is called, misthread the cap onto the barrel or either way, either if you cap it or if you uh, post it. That also happens to the Vanyar. I did not notice that before, maybe because I don't normally uncap and um, post 
this pen as much as I did during the video. But yeah, I hope you didn't think that this was a super disappointing unboxing video. Um, I felt like I was talking myself out of this pen while filming. And I do have uh, the ambition and drive that's not the right word, to actually give this pen a fair chance. I bought it for a reason. I bought it because I liked it on the website. And um, so I want to give it a fair shot and not be prejudiced from the beginning. So yeah, let me know if you have any Mayfair pens, what your experience with those pens is. Um, have you purchased one of those eyedropper pens that I know that Skoksky Pens does these kinds of um, eyedropper pens as well. I would love to know if you have those and what you use them for. I'm really excited and I hope to share whatever inky mess I will be getting into in the future. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again soon. Bye!